season over because they have two Long Beach Grand Prix. Paul Genelosi and his sights set on an all-time free win. It would have been his 30th victory. This pass on lap 37 is the dream. After a 27 career starts, Randy was winning two of his first career win. He realized the dream and launched it with, with six to go. Now, Randy Rubin set his sights on career for number two at Portland International Raceway. Now, the Rose 100 for the Trans Tour on speed. And welcome to Portland, Oregon. Portland International Raceway in the shadows of Mount Hood. Our past afternoon, set to be in the second round of the 2005 Grand Am Championship Series. A great tradition honored for Randy Roma. Talked a moment all about how he had won his first career event at Long Beach back in April. And earlier this weekend, Trans Am Series Director John Flaggett presented Randy with a chip right that inside our fellow Trans Am competitors. That is a champ car and Trans Am tradition. Great way to honor that achievement. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Jan Bikas is alongside, ready to go for the start of 2005 for the Trans Am Tour. You may come here for Randy Roma this weekend. Much different set of circumstances. It is. We have the concrete confines of Long Beach. Everything is tight. You have to try not to hit anything. Wide open spaces. And the tendency, of course, is to overdrive it. You think there's a lot of room, you tend to really push the car in the corners, and here it's going to be about tire management, not pushing too hard. And alongside one on the front, fourth quickest quality, the series champion who has quite a record to try to achieve today. And I think for all those of you talk about tire management, you talk about not pushing too hard and patience and caginess. It's all Paul Genelosi. I think this is going to be an ideal race for him to try to correct. Genelosi's got some tension behind him, as does Ruin. Two other Jag. What's the field? What do you think we'll here this week? Well, I think uh, only Klaus Graf is, is, is the man, certainly with speed, yeah. but not the same level of experience as far as knowing how to work the tires and how hard to push. Well, let's hear from some of the drivers who we expect to play a key role in today's Sam Rose City 100. Let's bring Shaheen with the pole setter. Randy Roman is a very excited guy coming into Portland because he has his first career Trans Am victory. It came at the last round at Long Beach. All right, Randy, are you a changed man now behind the wheel since you have a Trans Am win? Well, I certainly have a team that's all keyed up to do the rest of the season. That win at Long Beach really put a spark under the whole team, and uh, we're looking forward to today's race in Portland. Due to the inversion of the starting field that Trans Am does, you will start from the front row on the pole. How will that help you headed down into the chicane? Well, it's always an advantage to be in control right at the beginning. And uh, with the festival corner coming up first, the notorious corner, uh, it's nice to be in the lead position. I think that'll give us a little bit of an edge. The next thing Randy Ruhlman would like to be able to say is that he is a champion. My colleague on pit road, Paul Genelosi, is standing by with the reigning one. Yeah, Chris McClure here with Paul Genelosi. Last year, Paul had to start from the back of the field and roar his way through to victory. But Portland's always been kind of a favorite of yours, hasn't it? Well, it's a great racetrack with great fans, and it's one of the traditional race courses in North America that we need to cherish. How about the chance to make a little bit of history today? It's always in the back of your mind, I think, but maybe only when guys like me mention a 30th career win. I don't think it really matters. I mean, it's a great honor to have 29. If 30 happens, that's fine. Uh, I know that when I leave the sport, I can leave happy no matter what. Have a good run. Thanks a lot, Chris. Paul Genelosi, the defending champion in this series. Let's go back to Ralph Shaheen. Chris, in only his second career Trans Am start, Klaus Graf has qualified number one. He was the fast man in the qualifying sessions. But Klaus, that means you got to go to position number five. How much of a hindrance is that for you? Well, I mean, you've got to be careful at the start not to do any, uh, you know, any stupid things. It's a long race, and uh, I'll try to take it easy in the beginning, see how it goes with the traffic, and try to make my way up there pretty, pretty quickly then. Rick, he has adjusted quickly to Trans Am racing. He says, no big difference than anything else I've driven. It's got four wheels, an engine, and a steering wheel. You just got to drive it hard. Very accomplished. Klaus Graf, a big addition to Trans Am racing in 2005. Here's your starting lineup for the Rose City 100. Randy Ruhlman on pool today. Fifth fastest qualifier. That's the preformed line products car. Paul Genelosi has the Jaguar Rocket Sports number one alongside. And, of course, Greg Pickett trying to win a race of four different decades. And Michael Lewis has shown a lot of speed. Third row here today, there's Groff, the quick qualifier, 96.6 miles an hour. Joey Scarallo in that Corvette was quickest in the first practice here. Tommy Dreese, always a colorful character, and he's quick on the racetrack. Tim Cowan as well. Back to row number five. Hema Maher is a rookie. That's the second Durhawk Motorsports Chevrolet. Rob Holden, a GT1 entry in car number two. Phil Sims. With the Corvette, and of course, Rudy Rivac, that's the fastest qualifier in GTA. Remember, the GTA cars are part of Trans Am this year. Tim Barber in the seventh row in the 98. Art Muncher in car number 90, he'll line up 14. Steve Kelso is a stuntman and stunt coordinator. Hopes no stunts today. And on the outside, car 13, Guy Dreyer. 
back to number nine, Brad Jones in car number 57 in GTA. Roy Isley in the 46, he is a rookie contender. Steven Schmaltz and Dale Hartman are on the next row. Again, these guys filling out the field should be fun as everyone works through these cars. And the 11th row, Gary Hagstrom, one of the GTA cars. Monica Colvin's Chevrolet, that's a GT1 entry. She worked hard here a day ago. They're trying to put that car together and get her on the racetrack for the green flag here today. So we're moments away from the start of the Rose C100, second race of the Trans Am Tour in 2005. We'll be right back on Speed. Welcome back to Portland International Raceway on Speed, second round of the 2005 Trans Am Tour. It's the Rose City 100, part of the Champ Car Grand Prix of Portland weekend. Alongside Jan Mika, Cybert, Benjamin, front row, Randy Rubin, who won at Long Beach's first career victory. Alongside series champ Paul Gentilosi, top five, the fast five were inverted. So Rubin was the fifth quick qualifier, Gentilosi fourth. Behind him, you've got Pickett and Mike Lewis. What do we see on this first lap heading down to the festival curves? Yeah. Well, the interesting thing will be the difference in the Jaguars. Mike Lewis, as well as Greg Pickett, have the two-valve, more powerful engine, but Paul Gentilosi and Cross Graf have the lighter car. So it should be that the drive and the horsepower get to the festival curves first. First turn is right-handed. Gentilosi gets the drop on Rubin. Here comes Tracy. They're three wide in the one. Gentilosi takes the early lead. Mike Lewis to third. Tracy runs wide. Graf out of room. One car through the paved area now. On board Tracy. And Randy Roman, I'm not sure why he let Paul Gentilosi go, but when you're on the pole position, you set the pace, and for whatever reason, didn't seem to get with the power like we'd expect. Gentilosi opens up a half dozen car lights over Ruhlman. Now, all three Rocket Sports Jaguars got on the Long Beach were very quick. All three had mechanical issues. Gentilosi ran out of brakes and hit the tires, as we saw earlier in the broadcast. This is a different animal entirely here. It's a cooler day. Will that benefit him? Absolutely. Cooler days are so much easier on the equipment, but again, like we talked about in the open, the tendency here at Portland is, because it's wide open, is to overdrive the car. And it's all about staying smooth and saving your tires. It is a long race. And he will run second behind Gentilosi, working on lap number two. Greg Pickett is back in fourth, making fifth spot behind Tracy. Third spot belongs to Mike Lewis out of San Diego, the Autocon Engineering Jaguar. He's rolling into 49. Points leader coming in on the strength of that way. Here's Pickett diving to the inside. Pickett picks up a spot, gets around Tracy. Nicely done. That's the new Festival Curves Complex. Yeah, what have they done there exactly? Well, they didn't change the entry or the exit corners as we see Cross Graf gets to the ah. inside. Yeah, well, that was tight. Graf makes the pass on Dreesey. Cross Graf for Dermody starting to get going in the seven car, one of the Jag performance machines alongside Genelosi, part of the Rocket Sports team. There's Graf Seven. They took the gravel trap away in the festival. They did, yes. Yeah, sorry, to finish up the uh, festival curves, they took out the gravel trap. They moved turn two. It's not so deep. It's more like a chicane as opposed to a, a complex. Now, all the drivers in all the different classes like it say it has better flow, and I think it makes more passing opportunities. Watching Graf at the seven. Up to fourth now in front of Dreesey, who is in fifth spot. There's Pickett. Here you can see the new section in through there. Roman going after Gentilosi in the festival curves. Check it alongside Groff. Lewis is third, Groff is fourth, Pickett is fifth, Dreesey sixth, there's Groff, both both to the inside. Very, he's on top of the curve. I'm surprised if he'll be able to hold it to the inside, but Mike Lewis gives him enough room. Nice bit of respect there. He could have pushed the issue. Now, Grob is a driver of tremendous accomplishment, veteran of Porsche Super Cup and many other formulas, has even raced in a couple of Nextel Cup events. He was a teammate to Ken Schroeder a couple of times last year for BAM Racing in NASCAR. He knows how to get the job done. He led some laps along the beach. Oh, he does. And, and we talked about it again in the open. He's, I think, the fastest car and possibly the fastest driver. But, again, it's a long race when you make these kind of aggressive moves. The important thing is you didn't see any of the toes, you didn't see locking brakes, and that's what he's thinking. I gotta be fast, but I gotta take care of my tires and the car. 
These are fairly heavy race cars, 2,750 pounds for the most part. Graf now right up behind Holman as they come off turn 12. You don't want to slide these cars around if you can avoid it. No, I mean, qualifying may slide them all over the place, but in race conditions, you definitely want to try and keep the thing stuck. There's Pickett diving inside Lewis. Little break lock up, battle for fourth. Sam Racing, wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff through the Festival Curve. And that is the change, I think, that the new Festival Curves have allowed. I don't think with the old setup you could run two-by-two two all the way through, so I think it's a great change. Looking lap number five of 51, 100 miles the distance here today, or 75 minutes by time, depending on the situation. Great picket of the Cytomax Jaguar, running in fifth position. There's Mike Lewis, he sits for it. Now Jim Lewis, he's run all the way so far. He'll be right back. Welcome back to Portland. Rick Benjamin, Jan Bikas, Trans Am race number two in 2005, riding with Tommy Treacy, who's back in sixth. Treacy's been passed by a couple of cars now. Joey Scarallo right behind Drizzy. There's Pinkett behind Klaus Kraft. They're battling for third. Jim Lewis, he's run all the way so far. When you talk about Dreesy in six, he's only 2.5 seconds off the leader. This is definitely a tight bunch. You've got two light Jaguars sandwiching a heavier Corvette, but more powerful. So as the race goes on, the lighter AJ V8 cars, both Jim Rosie and Klaus Graf, you would think they'll be a little easier on the tires. Greg Pickett is coming in with the Cytomax machine there, silver and red, excuse me, silver and yellow. A little heavier, but more powerful. Might be better for passing. Watching that battle for second behind General Z. The gap was about half a second between the leader and second place last time by. On the back stretch here at Portland International. It's General Z in car number one, still your leader. Ruhlman second, Groff third, Pickett there in the silver car is fourth. Lewis and Tracy are next in line. How about number four straight away? Hey, Wednesday on speed, Pinks. Lose the race, lose your ride. What was the last time someone on a reality ship? something besides their dignity. The Pink Spits two ordinary drivers. They put their cars on the line. Rules are simple. When it gets the pink, the other guy's car. The loser has to find a ride home. Pink's Wednesday at 8.30 Eastern and Pacific. It's exclusively here on Speed. The second spot here is Groff diving inside. Boy, he likes that close action in the corners. He does, but the only way you make that pass is if the person you're passing shows you some respect and gives you room. And so far, he's he's had respect. At that particular time, he thought, I really don't have position here. And, of course, Randy Roman knew that. It's hard to say for more. Well, one of the good things that makes Trans Am Racing so great in its 40th season, it is full contact sedan racing. There's not, respect is one thing, but giving ground doesn't happen here very often. Well, full contact, it's definitely, there's rubbing. If you get full contact, they're not quite strong <laughs> enough to survive that. But certainly, you can rub up against That's a nice thing about closed wheel racing. But they still have lots of carbon fiber and so on that do break off these cars. So you do have to be cautious. As you go after the seven, the Jaguar high performance entries will allow its more stable three-car team. Lewis and Dracy back there as they fight for fifth. Pick it as fourth. Side of Max number six. Pick up the runner up in Long Beach, which is really a war of attrition. Greg takes a look inside. He's won here once before and has one transient championship to his credit. But just a great guy to be around. Oh, he is. And I know that he is the sentimental favorite by a lot. And this time, it saw the. Ah, oh, Graf with a move for second. Yeah, you can see that was set up in the fact that Randy Roman had a little bit of a miscue coming off the festival curves. And that's all the Graf needed to pounce. So Klaus Graf moves to second in car number seven. Shuffles Ruben back to third, but he's right there. Look at a tight front of the Cytomax car. Jed Lozzi has to love seeing all this happen in his rearview mirrors, but here comes Groff. Just at the exit of the previous corner, there was a little bit of a wiggle for the Corvette of Randy Woolman. Now was just enough room for Klaus. You can see how aggressive he had to be to slot it in there. Just to put a piece of paper between those two cars as they slot back into position. He's willing to put the car up over the rumble strips much more than anybody else we've seen so far. Yeah, he's, he's an aggressive guy. They call him the king of the late breakers. So if he, if he wants to get by Joe Rossi here, I, I think he might be happy to ride behind. But he's looking pretty aggressive. And kind of defensive posture. Oh, okay, that's why. Because they're passing one of the GTA machines. But first, I thought we had Joe Rossi playing a little uh, wide car there. <laughs> That's the night of Steve Kelso from Brooklyn, California. One of the GTA entries in the field today. It's a Chris McClure. 
Well, the team at Pitt Inn right here, the Jaguar team, has double duty today because they're handling the fortunes of Paul Genelosi and Klaus Graf in this particular bit. Troy Cowgill, the man who is the chief on both of those cars, is kind of monitoring the progress of both of those men who are out there right close together. My question is, perhaps rhetorically stated, if they get together, who gets the first repair? <laughs> it can be good to be the team owner. It can, yes. I would. Well, you know what? We'll just uh, hope that's not the case. Uh, because the, it's just a situation where, you know, teammates probably race harder than any other people out of the always think about your teammates, you're helping your teammates. But when it comes to the competitive aspect, you don't race anybody harder than your teammates. Graf is so much quicker, it appears, at the end of the front straightaway, through the festival and then on up through turn four, five, and six. I think it's a case, again, of being aggressive, cutting into the corners, being late in the brakes. Andy Wolfman is there, lapping some of the GTA cars. And if you were with us at Long Beach, you had a look at some of these machines. They're basically an ASA stock car. They're a tube chassis car. They run on a Goodyear bias fly tire. They make it off 475 horsepower, and they've got stock car bodywork, essentially. About three or four seconds a lap slower than the full-on Trans Am cars as we ride with Tommy Driesen. They have quite a bit less tire, they're an owl chassis, and you know, some of these cars actually are getting around this course really well. They are a second category this year within Trans Am. There are ten of them here competing this weekend. Riding with Dreesey in sixth, up behind Mike Lewis. That's the Autocon car of Lewis up ahead. Dreesey with a fantastic Ford movie sponsorship on his ride this weekend. A career Trans Am victory for Tommy Dreesey. Working lap number 11 of 51, the Rose City 100 for the Trans Am Tour. Well, General, he's got all the way so far. We'll be right back on speed. Welcome back to Portland. Race leader Paul Genelosi with mechanical problems just a moment ago. He got out of the gas. He's given up the lead way off the pace. Clearly something wrong with the Jaguar. Our performance number one. It happened at the festival curves, John Bikas. He and his teammate coming off the corner right where you would accelerate. All of a sudden something happened. He lost speed. Klaus Graf is trying everything to keep from running into his team boss and owner. And you can see way off the pace. Sounded as though when the car went by some type of engine related problem one would think but again as you start to accelerate off the next corner to the right right there Paul knew something went off song and Klaus just thinking oh boy right, right, Pickett. Uh, yeah. Pickett right there to try to capitalize and make a move that should put Pickett into second he had thoughts I think of grabbing the lead it comes the one car down pit road to the attention of Troy, Troy Cowgill and the team as we watch Steve Kelso take his GTA car off of pit road Chris McClure Paul Genelosi just drifted in off power completely and they're beginning to unsnap the front end of the car to get to the engine compartment. He did call in on the radio to Tom Ebersol who was handling communication with him that it just had a miss in the engine compartment and lost power. So that's what they're looking for and at. But right now he has no end fire in the engine at all and he's stopped on pit road. This could be a long one. So Klaus Graf inherits the lead in the other Jaguar R performance machine. This is car number seven. Graf takes over. He led laps at Long Beach. And Pickett vaults into second spot in the Cytomax Jaguar. Randy Rubin back to third. Leaders in heavy traffic. The GTA cars not giving a lot of ground here on the front straightaway because that's the battle for the GTA lead. The 98 bumper and the 99 of Rudy Rewack on the side. And they're rubbing on each other. Two very popular GTA cars. The 98 of Barber in front. Randy Roman's now got to figure out how to slice through this. That's Rob Holden there, that white Corvette, the number two. He's a GT1 competitor testing the Trans Am waters. There's the 99. That's Reback from San Jose, California, the symmetry car. Roman in the Vortex PLP, number 49. Can't find his way around. There's the 98 car of Reback. They are 11th and 12th overall. We talked about how well they get around here. <laughs> Randy Roman, it's like, I know he's frustrated, but it does show that these cars with much smaller tires, they have some of these cars set up extremely well. Roman now able to move out and get by Tim Barber's 98. Mike Lewis makes a move around Reback. That's the red Taurus back there. 
And here comes Ruhlman, who runs in third spot. Let's get an update on champion Paul Jodorowsky's situation. Chris? Well, it's electrical, and his day is done. You see Paul is now climbing out of the car after far too short a day for his purposes and hopes. Paul, did you have any warning this was going to happen? Yeah, something was going on with the throttle response, and didn't know what it was. The harness for the electronics that runs everything in the car was melting. And as it melted, it shorted out different signals, so that was the problem. And it ends, ends your day. Sorry to see you here. We'll see you in Cleveland. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Sorry to see you out here. We'll see you in Cleveland. I'm really sorry to see me here. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, after 15 laps, Paul Jellos, had led all the way. Electrical problems putting the championship car number one behind the wall. Watching Randy Rubin, the winner of Long Beach, he is third. Klaus Graf carrying the Rocket Sports banner with one of those AJV8s. He is the race leader. Second, more than a second back in second spot is Greg Pickett, and there is Ruhlman running in third. Now, Randy Ruhlman was blocked significantly by those GTA cars. He lost about four seconds for the leaders. There wasn't much he could do. It was right in the complex of corners where you really it's not room unless he wanted to force the issue. And of course, those, as we said, were the leaders of GTA. You know, they're not just going to bail out of the way. They have their own race going on. So that's just a case where there'll be other traffic for other cars. Hopefully he hopes that someone else is blocked and he can make up that distance. Good move by the Trans Am Tour officials to the GTA boys to come and run with them. And that's added to the field significantly. A second category in Trans Am this year. Riding with Tommy Dreesey. He is fit with the fantastic four machine. We'll be back. Speed coverage of the Trans Am Tour, the Rose City 100, second event of 2005 at Portland International Raceway. Race leader is Klaus Graf now as we work on lap number 25, approaching halfway. Fast qualifier, had to start 50 on because he's patiently picked his way up front. He has. He made some very aggressive moves early on, but now it's a case of he's got to have some concern about the fact that his sister car for Paul Genelosi had the wiring meltdown. Of course, these cars are identical, and of course, Greg Pickett has a slightly different power plant right behind there. He's hoping, well, I wonder if the same problem might befall both team cars. Greg Pickett, who won here in 1984, tried to become the first driver to win in four decades of Trans Am competition. Hey, anyone can ride a bike, but only a few have the guts to build a custom chopper from the ground up. One novice bike builder, one custom chopper, 30 days to build a bust. It's Tuesday nights, 9 Eastern only, here on... Riding with Tracy, having a look off the back deck lid. Of car number five, racing in fifth spot, 13 seconds off the lead, lapping by Monica Colvin's 08 car. There's a GT1 entry out of Victoria, British Columbia. Tracy doing a nice job in the first half of the race, not able to make contact, stay in contact with the leaders. Now, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, there is a new wrinkle in Trans Am competition this season. GTA cars have been invited to run with Trans Am. This is the second event in Trans Am for 2005 with the GTA cars in the field. These are essentially ASA stock cars. Limited motors, narrow tires, and stock car bodies, as you can tell. But as Jan has pointed out, they get around here very well. The battle for the lead had been raging. Tim Barber of the 98, that red Taurus. He is out in front of the category right now. Rudy Revac in the white number 99 in second. The gap between the two, a couple of seconds now. Rebeck has uh, been done, doing a nice job staying with Barber, but Barber started to stretch it out. Yeah, for Rudy Rebeck, he actually led for a while. They had some really close competition. They were rubbing on each other. It was definitely a great battle there for a while. Now you wonder if uh, Rebeck just kind of biding his time. Art Macharian in that black number 90. That's a Chevrolet. He is third in the category. Jones and Isley, fourth and fifth, as we saw there a moment ago. And there's Barber in that red torch. Very well turned out race car. I had a chance to visit with him this morning. Brand new car out of San Francisco, California. There's the 99 car for Rudy Vac. He's a veteran of GTA competition of the four tours. And for Rudy Rivac, when he scored the pole position in this class, he obviously got to go to the press conference with the Trans Am Fast Qualifiers, and he was just glowing about how much they enjoyed the Trans Am series and how organized it was and everything was on time. And, and they just, they're having a great time, and they enjoy the organizers giving them the shot. Engines make about 450, 475 horsepower. That's the signature racing tourist. And it's an introduction to Trans Am racing for a lot of these drivers and teams. 
Trans Am Director John Claggett telling us earlier in the weekend the hope is that these teams will enjoy Trans Am and that they will step up in a year or two to a full-on Trans Am car. Meantime, GTA operating as a second category within Trans Am this year. That's the 46 of Isley about to go a lap down to Barber. Now, Isley has been fourth, make it fifth at the moment in GTA, and he goes a lap down at the category leader. <laughs> Well, like I said, there are a few of these cars that are really hooked up. There's Reed back in the 99. He's closed back in on Barber now, so the gap tightens up considerably between the top two. Tim Barber, your leader in car number 98, the Riverside Motorsports Park Pioneer Motorsports for Tours. Overall race leader, Klaus Graf, and that Jaguar R performance, car number seven. Ralph Cross Graf has turned in a great drive so far in the first half of this event. Boy, he sure has, Rick, and he's the second German national to actually come racing in the Trans Am Series. The last driver to do that, the great Walter Rohr, who made his name in the World Rally Championship, who raced with the Audis when they were here back in the 1980s. And the thing about Klaus Graf is he came out of the Michelin Porsche Super Cup Series. And as you know, Jan, that's a real cut and thrust series. And I think we saw a lot of what he learned there early on as he was working his way through the field. Every time there was just the slightest opening, he shoved the nose of that Jaguar right through there and did it with real precision. Yeah, and that is sort of the technique you need to use in those type of series where the cars are so close. You don't get many opportunities, and when he sees an opportunity, he obviously took it. And this series is very interesting in the way that you need patience to manage the tires and to manage the length of the race. And I think I'm think that uh, he will learn as time goes on. Well, the idea, of course, in Trans Am, you don't want to have to make a pit stop. These are 100-mile races for the most part. If you have to come to pit road, it indicates you've got a problem, and it usually means your chances of winning are gone. So the idea is to manage the tires, use them up on the very last lap. Yep, and that was the case. But looking at Greg Pickett, he had an opportunity, essentially, to win Long Beach, and so he just didn't save it up in the end. Greg Pickett is second, perhaps in position to steal victory here at Portland. Drop the leader, Ruman runs third ahead of Lewis and Tommy Green. Welcome back on speed, preparing for a restart of the Trans Am Rose City 100 from Portland International Raceway. We're back underway. Klaus Graf is your restart leader in that Jaguar, the number seven. Right behind him, the Cytomax Jaguar, Greg Pickett. Randy Roman restarts third in front of Mike Lewis. Tommy Tracy lines up fifth on the restart. Joyce Corallo, Tim Cowan, Kima Barr, the rookie in the other Durant car. Bill Sims, now, during that caution, the GTA cars, the lap traffic was moved to the back for the restart. So all the Trans Am machines up front, as we go green, we've got 17 laps to go. And it's a case, really, where it breathes some new life in your tires. You find out if someone, in fact, has been saving something, or for someone who might have been pushing a little too hard, nice caution period will cool everything down, give you a chance to get your speed back again. Riding with Tracy in the Fantastic Four Jaguar. Tracy sitting in fifth position in car number five. Wednesday nights on speed, stepping into the world of unique, unique whips. It's a custom auto shop that turns the cars of the stars into one of a kind works of art. Unique whips, Wednesday nights at 9 Eastern. It's only here on speed. Down the back stretch, heading to turns 11 and 12 with Tommy Dreesey, who's a well-known fixture in the Hollywood community, Ralph Shaheen. Well, that's exactly right, Rick, and that's why he's got that fantastic four sponsorship. You've seen a lot of Tommy's handiwork in his real life business and probably didn't even realize it. The next time you go to the movie theaters and you see all those displays, the giant stand-ups promoting the upcoming big flicks for the summertime, well, that's what Tommy does when he's not racing behind the wheel of his Jaguar in the Trans Am series. But he actually kind of began his racing career a little bit different than most people. Started off in vintage car racing. With more than the guy that's chasing him down, here's Chris McClure. Well, Joey Sorello last year scored his best career finish here at Portland fourth. He was the most improved driver in the series last year. Now, since Long Beach, they rebuilt the car, put on new bodywork under the direction of Jeff Swain here, who is the crew chief. Then you went to Mosport, set a record there, won a race, and got together and kind of got your chemistry going. Has that helped a bunch today? Oh, time, time. We've uh, we worked together down there in Canada, and it was great. It was really good to, to gel. Now, what's he looking to do out there the rest of the race? I think you've been kind of easing your way through it so far. Well, unfortunately, we got into uh, one of the other cars over there, and we went across the curb, and we've knocked the toe out on the car. So 
basically we're just trying to save what we got today. Okay, suddenly they're just trying to get to the end. Let's go back upstairs. Well, when you're talking about the toe, of course, that's toe in, toe out. So if the toe is out, it means it's not tracking properly. It means A, it's not going to turn in the corner, and B, it's going to scrub a lot of speed on the straightway. It's for our that Toyo tires. Chevrolet, the 06, he's been at this a couple of years now. He's really got some great assistance besides Jeff Swain. Tony Abe is in charge of that team now, but there are a few guys more capable in American racing than Tony Abe. Yeah, and that's got to be tough because Tony Abe is obviously a very capable race car driver, and a lot of them, you know, when the finances don't fall into place, he's such a good engineer as well. He still tests cars for people, but he prepares a nice machine as well. Philip Sims in car number 24. He's out of Florida. Sims in ninth position in that Chevrolet. He had huge problems during qualifying here on Friday. And they've rebuilt that car overnight to get him ready to go. But let's take a look back at what happened to Sims out of Florida. Sims motor Chevrolet. Listen to this now. Ouch. Amazing they were able to put that car back together. Right when you let off the brakes, it's almost like you take all that weight of the car that's, that's essentially stored in the brakes and let it off, hoping to spin it back around the other way. And man, that, like you said, <laughs> a, uh, you wouldn't say a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, the audio is worth a thousand bucks. Absolutely, at least. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't bend the frame so badly that they couldn't repair the car. I mean, that's a testimony of how strong these transient cars are. Yeah, you also was located in the absolute <laughs> perfect location. So well, there's that. Hats off to our audio boys who know right where to put them on the concrete barrier. Sims right there, excuse me, on all over Hema Mar as they battled for position. Mar up in eighth. This first Trans Am drive, that's the orange number 78. That's the other Durhawk Motorsports entry. Mar doing a nice job in his first Trans Am start. So they get by Monica Coleman, 08 car. Bill Sims in ninth. Your leader is Klaus Kraft. We'll be back. Laps to go at the Rose City 100, second race of the Trans Am Tours 2005 season. We'll be on Beacon side, Rick Benjamin, Ralph Shaheen, Chris McClure on pit road. Race leader continues to be Klaus Graf. But yeah, we've watched a great battle here for second. Randy Woolman has the spot. Greg Pickett dives inside as they head to turn one. Pickett's got a brake issue. Let's show you how second spot changed hands just a moment ago. Here they come off the final quarter. Pickett with second right now in the silver car, and that's Roman right behind him. Well, Greg Pickett had a nice drive down the straightaway, but watch, as soon as he gets on the brakes, starts to lock up the inside front tire. He's trying everything he can to get it released, but it just stays locked. Can't get it turned in. Of course, Randy Roman pounces and moves right on through. Now, that's not the first time it's happened to Greg Pickett. We saw it just now as he challenged back. Obviously, some type of braking. We assume it's a flat spot on the tire now, but something in the brakes led to that in the first place. Working lap of the 44 of 51 today here at Portland International Raceway. Klaus Graf is our race leader. Randy Woolman in second spot. Let's get an update from downstairs. Ralph Sheen. Troy Cowgill is his crew chief for Klaus Graf. Uh, boy, Troy, it has been an impressive day by Klaus so far today. Are you just trying to get him to the finish? Have you backed him off his pace at all? Yeah, I'm him about halfway through to, you know, slow down and just take it easy on the tires and stuff like that. Looks like Greg kind of used up his tires. He fell back to third. We're, we're running a uh, couple of pace right now. As you know from last year, it's not really over until the last lap. The last lap last year, uh, we had like three quarters of a lap to go and burn up a diff, so we're just trying to take it easy here. We've got seven laps to go, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's why they call it racing. You never know until that checkered flag falls. Mike Allen is Greg Pickett's crew chief a moment ago. We were going to ask you if he could get to the front now. We have to ask you what went wrong, because apparently the brakes were off, and he gave up the spot. Well, he went over, he dialed in a little bit, of too much rear brake, we're locking a little bit, he's dialed that back. Tires are slippery right now, for some reason. We got a little bit slippery tire. He's, he's pecking back now, I understand that by rule has gone by, and Greg's back by him. We're starting to duel out a little bit, we saw that Greg's on the sidle, Max, he's sucking it hard, that's going to be good. It's going to be good at the end. Well, pick a one here in 1984. He's trying to duplicate that today, and it's a long race. It ain't over, so we'll see. Great pick at one of the great veterans of Trans Am. Meantime, a lead change in the GTA category. This is the car of Rudy Revac, the 99, this Ford Taurus. Revac got by Tim Barber a couple of laps ago. Revac from San Jose, California, the Symmetry Nutritional Ford. He is in front of that category. 
that had 10 cars starting here today as we watch Rivac take it into the first couple of quarters here at Portland International. For Rivac, I think it was a case of saving the car in the middle of the race, and then when it was time to press the button, he had something left and just was able to, to really stretch out that gap. Okay, the back of the Symmetry Ford is the GTA leader at the moment as we watch him navigate the S's heading toward the backstretch. Six laps to go, they're working out 46 of with one. Raff continues to lead. Randy Woolman in second, six and a half seconds back. Now, Raff has picked the pace up as we check timing and scoring here momentarily at the top of your screen. You can see the most recent lap times. Raff had back down, he was running 116.2s approximately. He's picked it back up at 115.7 last night. Well, it's a case where you can get one more additional point for the fastest lap. So you kind of wait till the end. You heard Troy say, well, we burned up a diff last year, meaning the differential. So we do have to be cautious. But Klaus is a guy who, if there's an opportunity to score a point, he's going to try. <laughs> he's certainly here to try to win the Trans Am Championship. No question about it. Paul Genelosi, his teammate, Len Hurley from the outside ball. And Electrics put the one car behind the ball. Ralph? You know, Rick, it's kind of interesting. I spoke to Paul Genelosi about Klaus Graf. I've spoken to some of the Rocket Sports crew guys about Klaus, and everybody says the same thing. I asked him, you know, what makes this guy so good? And they all said, you know, he's just a very, very talented race car driver. He's got the complete package. And when you put him behind the wheel of a good race car, this is what you get in a dominating performance. And Yon, I guess sometimes for us who don't do this for a living, it seems like you're oh, kind of hard to stay in trouble. Those are, the, those are the leaders of both classes. Wow. Raff nearly put Rudy Rebac into the wall as he came through the S's heading to the backstretch. They both straightened their cars out. Raff is back on the gas, but for a moment there, it looked like disaster was going to befall the two <laughs> leaders. <laughs> wow. Rebac straightens out the 99, and he continues on as well. So. The leader of GTA is okay. The leader of the overall event is okay. But here's a look at what happened a moment ago with Klaus Graf. Just got to the inside, thought he was going to have room, but not the case. Rayback straightens it up, grabs, stays on the racetrack, and he is okay. Three laps to go in the Rose City 100 at Portland International Raceway. The race leader is Klaus Graf. Rocket Sports Jaguar, car number seven, the Jaguar performance entry. Jan Vikas, he survived a close call just a moment ago with Rudy Rivak. Meantime, in the festival curves just a few seconds ago, Tommy Dreese was running fifth, battling with Tim Cowan. What happened here? Well, he got slowed there by Tim Barber, I believe it was, and then Cowan comes in and hammers him from behind. There it is with Dreese's onboard look. Heavy traffic in turn one. Red 98. Cowan came in too hard and booted him. Well, it was the case of when one person checks up, it's kind of like the accordion effect, and I'm sure that Tim Cowan didn't expect them to back up that quickly, and obviously gave him a good boot from behind. But for Tommy Dreese, it took him a while to get it restarted, so he lost a lot of time. From fourth all the way back to eighth for Dreese with a couple of laps to go. So let's reset. Graf is your leader. There's Dreese in the fantastic Ford Jaguar car number five in front of a couple of GTA cars. He is back several spots now in eighth position. Graf is your leader. Randy Roman is about six seconds back in second. Greg Pickett runs third, another seven seconds behind. Now Joy Scarallo is taking advantage of all this. That Tony Abe tuned an engineered car. Scarallo up to fourth just like he was here a year ago. Well, that's why we heard some of the crew members say, you know, this race is not over until the final lap, and it was a great opportunity for him to stay out of trouble and save the equipment. Watching Klaus Graf will see the white flag next time by. Much flawless exercise for the Rockets Sports 7 car here today. Got led laps at Long Beach in the season opener back in April, but had difficulties and did not get to the finish line. Today he is just about a lap and a half from the checkered flag. Survived that very close call with Rudy Rebac just a few moments ago. Rebac continues to lead the GTA category. He is 10th overall. Running over top of your screen. Well, we can actually see Randy Woolman in the shot now. So, I mean, he's not close enough to pounce, but we do have our leader in some traffic. Out of the front stretch, heading for the white flag, Klaus Graf. He will move to the inside of his teammate, Dreese, and put him another lap down. There's the white flag for that one. Klaus 
needs only to keep it between the white lines for about a mile and three quarters here at Portland. It is from Dornham, Germany. The Jaguar R Performance Rocket Sports Racing Jaguar with the AJ V8 engine. That's the smaller fuel injected engine. Lighter weight in a traditional road course like this may well be a big advantage. I think so. It does have a little less horsepower as far as going down this long straightaway problem. But in these interior sections, we have long corners. That 200 pounds lighter makes a big difference on the tires. Just hitting the beat of the season for the Trans Am Tour. Next Saturday, the series will be at Cleveland at Burt Lake Front Airport. The Grand Prix of Cleveland, the Trans Am Grand Prix of Cleveland. Two weeks after that, Toronto. And Edmonton and San Jose back to back in the month of July. So it's a very tough schedule through the middle part of the season here. Klaus Graf on his final tour around this near two mile 12 turn circuit. Heading off the turn 12 and heading to the Chipman flag. His second career Trans Am start. His first career victory upcoming. Klaus Graf and the Rocket Sports Jaguar takes the Chipman flag. He is the winner today here at Portland. Second to Randy Woolman in the Durhack's preformed line products car. Third to Joey Scarallo, who got a right break picking up the final lap. Here's Scarallo in the Toyo Tires car, the 06 from Smith Down Long Island. And they wheels auto trend entry. Tommy Dreesy and Tim Cowan. Now they got into it a couple of laps ago. Dreesy coming back at Cowan as Groff lays down some bumper and some donuts at the festival curves. Mike Willis runs fifth, Cowan is sixth, seventh to Phil Sims, Tommy Dreesy finishes eighth. We'll meet the winner when we continue in Portland. Two Trans Am events in 2005, the two first-time winners, the Rose City 100 at Portland International, goes to Klaus Graf from Germany. He's with Ralph Shaheen. Well, this didn't take long, Klaus. Two Trans Am races, and you're in victory lane. Are you surprised it was this quick? Uh, it was my goal. But still, you, know, you still got to finish the race first, you know. And it was uh, tough in the beginning. So uh, Tommy Dreesy just flew by everybody at the start. And uh, so it was a bit hectic in the beginning. Then Paul was leading, I was behind. And he had a problem in front of me. I almost ran in the back of him. So uh, once I was in the lead, I was able to control the speed. And, and after the caution, I mean, the car was unbelievable. I mean, I made a little adjustment. I made a little uh, uh, bar adjustment uh, inside the car. And then after the course, it was fantastic. I mean, the guy told the guys told me, go a little softer. And I did it, and it was beautiful, thanks to the Rocket Sports guy. I mean, unbelievable job. Congratulations, Klaus. He's got a win in a pole. Jeez, maybe he can go for a championship. Chris McClure's was second. Ralph, he might go for a championship over there. This guy is going for a championship, opening the season first and then a second. Way to go. Thanks very much. It was a great day today. The guys worked real hard on the car. We were chasing it all weekend long, and we knew if we got a dry day and Champ Car laid some rubber down that the car would come to us, and it, it certainly did. Uh, track started to grease up midway, but uh, we had lots of car left. I wish we had a few more laps. We would like to try to give Klaus a run, but he did a great job today. So. Uh, we look forward to going to Cleveland. <laughs> is this, in a sense, the kind of day we have to take what the race gives you? Because that's what championships are built on. It really is. I mean, it's, it's a day not to get too over-anxious. you got a corner like the festival up there where it's real easy to get in trouble and force the issue early. I started to get into it a little bit with Paul Genelosi, and uh, I figured the better thing to do was just to let him go, set the pace. I was able to run with him until he ran his tires off or whatever happened to him, and then uh, the race kind of came our way, so uh, we were happy with it. Now Randy Roman able to hold the points lead, Jan Vikas, with his second top two of the season. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I think in particular for Paul Genelosi, we thought about that record today. His next start will be his 200th. Is he saving it for the big 200? And a place at Cleveland at Berkeley Lake Florida, where he has won before. Tim Barber in 11th, Art Chariot, Roy Isley. These are all GTA cars. Our GTA winner today was Rudy Reback in the 99 car. Genelosi 21st after electrical problems in car number one. That wraps up our coverage of the Trans Am Rose City 100 from Florida. Be sure to join us Sunday, July 3rd at 3 Eastern for our coverage of the third Trans Am of the season on speed from Cleveland, Ohio. Next up, the Moto GP 250, the Dutch Grand Prix. That's next, right here on Speed. Rian Vikas, Ralph Shaheen, and Chris Matura Hybrid Regiment congratulating our winner today, Klaus Graf. Thanks for watching. So long from Portland, Oregon.